give me a second, please. I need to close all my apps. Okay, uh, yeah, let's start. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to the sixth edition of the UXC meeting. Uh, let me share my screen so that we can start going over the agenda. So, agenda for today. Um, so, first of all, introduction, uh, agenda review and agree on agenda topics. So first of all, I'm going to give uh, everyone a bit of uh, some updates on, on what the status of the SIG is, what we did this last, this past two weeks. Um, and then we, I'm going to talk about some design feedback we collected on, when working on the header PR. And then Vadek wants to raise a, a point about how to improve feedback loop for, for non sig members. Okay, uh, into those new participants, I think everybody, we already know each other, for the record, I'm Felix Kiruga, front end developer from Cloudis, who, who is working on, on this project. Okay, so, um, updates. Uh, these past 50, uh, two weeks, we moved to Gitter, uh, thanks, uh, to whoever created the channel, I think it was Ulrich. Uh, so basically, all discussions are we we are going to start uh, discussing all the matters for the seeking guitar. Uh, we have uh, we have updated the, also the documentation page on Jenkins.io, and we try to notify to as many people as possible in as many channels as possible that we change the discussion forums. Uh, we also recently, well, the header and breadcrumbs got merged. Well, not merged, approved, <laughs> basically. Oh, uh, they are uh, the header and breadcrumbs um, pull request is slated for merging tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to make it to the LTS, but it's going to make it to the Jenkins 2.222 version, probably. And what's next? Um, I want to refresh what we talked in previous in previous SIG meetings. Uh, what we aim in f changing uh, right now as our next steps will be focused on changing uh, mainly typography, the typography hierarchy, um, and fonts. Uh, sorry, the typography hierarchy uh, and the typography fonts, basically. So this is something that we talked in a past SIG meeting. This uh, this uh, design deck is, is linked in the uh, here is linked in the SIG meeting from the fifth of February. If anybody wants to take a look at it. Uh, also about regarding typography, I have come, uh, sent an email to the Chai, to the lead of the Chinese localization SIG to SIG uh, to seek input uh, for. Uh, for uh, fund the choices that don't degrade the uh, user experience for people who use uh, non-Latin non alphabets as their main, yeah, well, as their main uh, language, basically. So this was it for these past two weeks, basically. No active development. It was, well, not active development on the typography, just research. Um, is there, does anyone want to ask about this, uh, this or bring something up? Okay, I guess we're good then. So, I think there's maybe something, one thing I just saw that I was, I missed that. I think we are seeing the exact use case for the mailing list here. Uh, that's great, you reached out to these people, uh, for now it, only somewhat in private because it's only targeting the various leads, uh, the uh, people from the Chinese community. And I think we, could, uh, we should actually CC the Jenkins UX mailing list so that everything is public and transparent. What do you think? You're mute. 
Yeah, I'm sure you're good, good to call. So CC the mailing list because obviously that's just one guy, and you know he might not be available for. A, he may be on leave, or you know, God knows what's happening in China with the coronavirus. So I mean, it'd be good to hit as many people as possible on the mailing list. Yeah, and I think if in general we're working on on something that's open, we should strive to make everything, every single bit of work public. Yeah. yeah. That's anyway, good. that's just kind of an aside that that's been improved. Yeah, so you can kind of resend the mail, I guess, and well, just add the, C the mail to the CC of the mail list. That would be, that would be a good suggestion. Yeah. Just a question about the typography you are working on, uh, Felix. Uh, do you have already some plan about how you can cover every case in the ecosystem? I mean, the two typography, the current one and the new one, are not very uh, distant one from each other. And so if there is some specific rules in some plugin or in core or things like that, potentially it could be easy to miss them. Do you already think about that part or? Oh, you seem still muted. You're muted, Felix. Yeah. Since uh, two okay. or three probably. Yeah, it does okay. go. Yeah. Now, um, one of the few, um, one of the things we aim to do is based on our on discussions from previous SIG meetings was we realized base, uh, one of the things is update typography, basically update the font, probably going with a more modern form font. Another thing is uh, establishing a hierarchy uh, using CSS classes and uh, default styling for the tags, a hierarchy that makes sense. Uh, we will also provide utilities, for example, if somebody wants to put an H2 heading, but with a, that looks really huge, like our display, we also will add CSS classes fallback and that basically just that base typography rules as everything plugins can also deviate from current typography rules right now so there's only so much we can do but we want to uh, provide a good baseline so that they don't need to basically one well, other things that we we are probably going to look next is this sidebar, uh, especially for example, when looking at typography, one of the main, one of the common complaints was that this sidebar, the, li the, the links were so small and Jenkins, it was difficult to work with Jenkins, for example, doing presentations and everything. Uh, so we will probably be looking into tackling onto the typography of this sidebar and working on this, on this basically. So that's our plan. It, it's in the early stages of research. We will share mockups. We will share everything as, as soon as we have them to iterate on the feedback, basically. Does this answer your question? Would you like further clarification? My concern is more about if I'm a plugin developer, if I'm using a specific font that is exactly the same one as the core, but it was more by a mistake that I used the same because I don't know exactly how CSS is working. In that case, you are providing the new style for the core but potentially we will not be able to see the difference between my font, the previous one, and the font you are proposing. Um, if we are looking into using Roboto, which is already bundled into Jenkins Core, which is already used in the setup wizard. So if plugin authors uh, choose a different font, I mean, they will see, if we change Jenkins base rules in Jenkins Core, plugin developers can still change it. So I don't understand, just to me, I don't even understand why it would be actually a problem. It would almost be a good thing. Why, why, why are you saying, like, if people would be already using the font we are going to settle the standard on, in your mind, this is a problem? But no, it's more about if, as a plugin maintainer, I was just overriding some CSS rules by mistake or by lack of knowledge, and we know the, all the plugins are not equal in terms of quality. So the font you are overriding currently is the same as the one in the core, so there is no problem. But with the new approach, the new style, the new font we are providing, that previously overridden rules, it's just a new rules. And so it takes precedence potentially. 
So it's more about yeah. how you can have that uh, warning in a sense for the the plugin maintainer point of view in a sense. Yeah, um, yeah. basically what, do, what we are going to do is um, first of all we are going to I'm going to look for cases of custom font family declarations, which is the way uh, the, for places where plug, uh, in the Jenkins CI organization places where actually new fonts are being loaded. That, that's part of the research. Uh, we already took some steps re towards it. For example, in the Jenkins right now, in the when you never you go to the um, when if you want to do work with responsive fonts, would you will use a CSS unit that before uh, that I uh, you couldn't use before, and I and I I added a patch on the header and breadcrumbs uh, pull request that makes it work in all Jenkins pages. So that's there are steps we are taking towards it to, as Baptiste said, correct stuff, basically, and make it easier not to mess it. But it's part of the research. Okay, fine. That's why it takes a while. Okay, um, if there's anything else, I will move on to the next the next section for the same feedback. There are um, a few pieces of of feedback we collected uh, when creating on the Jenkins. Uh, Header and breadcrumbs PR. So I'm going to scroll past all of these. It's mostly for the benefit of new people. So, okay. So admin monitor warnings. There was, uh, we received some feedback that um, maybe Batek can elaborate that mainly that uh, this new design for the warning monitor does not pop, it's not as in your face as it should be. Also, some, we also, there's a proposal, this is, and by the way, this is just a mock-up, this is not a final design, okay? But for example, of having this, uh, swapping the red uh, background, so for example, some some alternate proposals. Also, uh, Daniel Beck raised a good point that pluralization feels weird, that for example, if you had two, you would read monitors, Two instead of two monitors, so that's that's a point. That's a nice point. So uh, we'll, just just one question: the, the top design is the way it is now, at least with the once your PR gets merged. Yeah, uh, and the yeah, one so, below is a proposal. Yeah, it's a, it's an experiment. Sorry, I did, yeah. I, I assembled this deck in a. No, no worries. Okay, I just we, want we to make it. sure. But this, this is the. I mean, if the PR gets merged, the top is how it will look, and the bottom is a potential thing. Yeah, yeah the bottom is basically a GIMP edited thing I did uh, in two minutes with my yeah. great skills. <laughs> I, 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 inc um, I included it shamelessly. <laughs> um, um, I, I just think so. I think right now. Oh wait, I'm going. I'm going to. Yeah, let's talk about that. About that. Okay, well, um, what we, so before uh, commenting, I'll uh, open this for comments. What we are going to do is definitely collect all the feedback people have. We are 100% open to for several iterations on the same UI element. No design is closed. We will collect all the feedback, and if, if needed, we will revisit it. And once we work on the warnings pop up, Probably, or on a separate PR. But we, first, we will want to collect the feedback, inform ourselves, do actual accessibility, do more comprehensive accessibility testing to see if the, if the contrast is good in any option. So basically, we uh, we heard this we heard this feedback, and we will look into it. Any what care to elaborate on this? Rob, just one point, because it was even in the title in the, this slide deck, the most important thing from my point of view is that this information about the admin monitor is not a notification. Because mm -hmm. a notification is really, yeah, you receive a new message or you receive something that is not really important. It's interesting, but not important. In this case, the admin monitor, we listed the things with uh, Daniel Beck about what is important and what is less. On the setup that we had for the test, it was about 40 admin monitor and only two are not really important. All the other are about lack of performance, lack of security, lack of something that is important. And so for me, this 
uh, UI means it's just a notification. If you don't read it, it's not important. But actually it is. So that's my main concern for the admin monitor in general. Okay. Um... One of the things we can look into is to, to determine if there are actual security warnings, use a warning icon instead of a bell, using a bell on yeah. it, their information stuff. Uh, that's something probably, that... probably upstream or, or separately from uh, the PR of the header right now, there could be ongoing work. I'm not sure that yeah, we need some kind of level of criticality of the messages that are being sent you know, to the the monitor, I mean monitor features so that we can differentiate and maybe make it red only if the criticality is you know, I don't know, high or something, you know. Because yeah. we have things like uh, when the reverse proxy is badly set up, you know, is a bad thing, but is not maybe worth with the red. You know, the one on the top is maybe enough, you know. For that reason, we have something in our backlog in the security team to split the warning into what is just non-security warnings and security warnings. Because for some companies, if you have at least one security issue, you cannot use it in production. And so we need to be careful about this kind of information. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, that, that's kind of a, well, my concern or my request is that I think maybe making things security related is a bit um, uh, unnecessary, unnecessarily to uh, constrain, restricted. I think maybe we want to introduce something like uh, you know the log levels, like some level of criticality, and then people who are using admin monitors will define the criticality of the message that are being messages that are being sent, and maybe there would be a top level that would be like I don't know high vulnerability or something or or security related, and then the rest would be I don't know you know critical, high, medium, whatever. Uh, I just think that like uh, maybe Boolean thing like is this security, is this not, maybe is a bit, while we are at it, is a bit uh, unnecessarily limited. I guess we're kind of going a little bit beyond what we're trying to do here, which is just doing a CSS based facelift at the moment, whereas this is obviously something that new functionality, and that's important and worth noting. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with the enemy. Uh, uh, any other idea, if you talk on this? Uh, Tim, may I ask what do you think of this? Do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, I think, I'm not too worried on the admin monitors. I think you've covered it quite well. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so basically what I said, we are going to look into it. We are going to inform inform our uh, uh, future decisions on um, based on what Vadek say, said. But, of course, as Jeremy said, this is a CSS-based refresh and revamp. So we are going to not expand any functionality, especially if it's security-related. Okay. Um, Next, uh, the next feedback piece we, we, we did receive was the contextual menu dropdown. It has been mentioned that uh, there are several problems going on with it. I'm sure everybody knows. It's, it's used across the whole application from the breadcrumbs to the links in the header to the, to the jobs uh, to, the, to the tables. It has several problems. It's, it's, the discoverability is really low. You need to hover over the element it's a power user feature, basically. It's difficult to click. It's only 16 pixels wide. It does not interact with the element it's on. When you hover over it, chances are they, it will not have hover effects or focus effects on the element it's positioned above. And it's, in, in, its implementation is a bit difficult to evolve. It uses some rather old JavaScript. I'm not saying it's valid. I'm saying it's 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 old and it's and with its legacy and it's used across the whole application. So there's a potential to break lots of stuff. So from our point of view, is we acknowledge this is a problem. This is a area of the interface that definitely there's room for improvement. But um, we don't think we think our efforts for this CSS refresh are better located elsewhere. Basically, there are far more important things 
from layout, typography, the sidebar, the tables that demand our attention. So we know this is uh, an issue. Uh, it has a lower priority than all the other bigger bank for your back improvements. So can anyone? we document? I think this is this is absolutely acceptable. I'm just thinking maybe it would be great in our central page, maybe not on the week, um, not on the I website or somewhere else, main uh, resources that we actually put. You know what we are explicitly like you know knowing about, but we don't touch at least for now. But anyone maybe is free. You know, if someone wants to give it a try in the Citrus community, actually it's an open thing. So you know, what I mean, like we're kind of kind of make it clear so that people don't come over and over and over about some recurring problem and say, oh, I think it's shit. And we're like, well, we actually look at it. We know it's a problem, but we think there are you know, higher, more important things that we're going to look at first. You know, so that kind of <laughs> avoid having people watching hours of uh, SIG meetings to actually find what we know about already. Yeah. Would you uh, maybe, I, one thing that comes to mind is maybe we can create a user story for that on the Jira tracker. Yeah, we can add a backlog item. I mean, something we'd like to pick up one day. So I have a question. Um, is this only about uh, the drop down menu or also to the uh, for the contextual menu? Um, with drop down menu, I mean the contextual drop down menu. I mean this sort of menu. Whenever you position something, you see this arrow. And then it's it's also on the sidebar on the jobs uh, descriptions I think. Right. On the, um, the the thing is, you see the arrow arrow pointing to the right, just to the right of the arrow pointing to the bottom. That is also a pop up menu. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. With with that, I meant the the arrow pointing down, the menu pointing right here. Ah, uh, uh, you mean this? No. Uh, between the words Jenkins and the word all, there's an arrow pointing to the right, and that is also a menu. Yeah, that's that, that's sort of a similar case. It's not the same. We I was talking about the other. We were talking about the other, but the other one is also breadcrumb behavior that we did not feel comfortable changing when uh, updating the styles for the breadcrumbs. But I think the point is that the discoverability of them is fairly low. I mean, and they're hard to click, and I think that applies just as well. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair enough that we're sort of benching it, for, parking it for the moment, because the, you know, there's probably hundreds of other things to do, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a real, it, it is an issue. Yeah, we have and also, 25 Sorry. clones of you, then we would put one of them onto it. Also, Daniel, a uh, quick mention about this um, uh, separator menu uh, between breadcrumbs. I don't think it's, maybe we can take this discussion offline, but I don't think it's possible to change it without pre-bumping the breadcrumbs code on Jenkins. So it's definitely a bigger task. And it can seem. Yeah, I, I, just, I just wanted to get clarity on whether hmm. this um, general topic applies to both variants or only to the drop-down menu variant. Uh, both of them. <laughs> Probably both of them. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, I'm going to. I don't have much to share regarding these fit of pieces. So, Vadek, if you please could go ahead and talk about what you wanted to mention about this uh, this uh, topic. So yeah, essentially it was a discussion we initially have in the CloudBeast channel directly, but for the openness, just to discuss that more broadly. So mainly during the feedback uh, we can provide in the PR, it's a bit difficult for a community member to come and to provide feedback on the UI directly, the new design that is proposed, because it's already a PR. And you expect the people to be present in the SIG meeting, to discuss, to provide feedback, to improve the feedback look in general, but it seems to be a bit difficult for every community member to be involved in the SIG meeting, in addition to the other things they have to do. So 
Providing the feedback in the PR seems to be the more straightforward approach for the people outside of the SIG, but it seems it was not initially expected, especially after my initial feedback, it was more about, yeah, we need to discuss in the SIG topic instead of the, the PR. But in that case, do we need to have a preview step before the PR? We discuss initially perhaps similar to a JEP or things like that to propose the, the design in the community, so outside of the SIG. So mainly the discussion is mm -hmm. just an open discussion. What could be improved there? Because from my point of view, as an external member, because I was not following the initial meetings, it's a bit difficult to have the context because it was not really explained all the things that are already discussed or not and to provide feedback to have something useful, I would say. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I have a few points here. I mean, one of the original guiding things when we started this whole process was that we wanted to avoid the signing by committee. So we didn't want to have the whole Jenkins community saying, I don't like this color, or I don't like that. But at the same time, we did want to have some level of consultation as well, which is why we set up the Jenkins UX SIG. So, so I mean, I, I think I, I agree with the approach that we should push back on giving the sign feedback in the PR. The PR should be concerned with the code quality, you know, security issues, you know, regressions that could introduce. Um, so I think that the SIG meeting really is the place to review the designs. However, maybe we could also post the design somewhere, but. At the end of the day, we do want to avoid design by committee where everybody's like, well, I think this pink's a little bit too pink and that purple's a little bit too purple, you know? It's, uh, so it, it, it's a difficult balance between getting some reasonable feedback and, you know, not having a thousand people pulling a pixel. Yeah, I agree. Also, also we want to optimize for Time. I don't think it's good for anybody. I, mean, I think everybody interested will diminish if we if we need to create a gap for the every design change. The the feedback loop will be too big, and yeah. it will take us too long to deliver even small UI pieces. Something we can do is maybe whenever we we are about to, we we are about to present designs on the SIG meeting. Maybe we could look. Uh, we will. We will explore. Uh, I, I, what I would suggest is maybe we can look into venues for making people aware that new designs have been posted and they are up for discussion. Maybe an invitation to discuss them on the guitar room. But cool. we, for example, maybe using putting an announcement on the on a Google group or what uh, the Google mailing list. Yes, new designs come discuss them to the guitar. Yeah, I think we should have something like a place, so not the wiki, but either using more Google Docs or some central place for people to be able to follow from far away or something. Um, but then we can indeed and not expect everybody to be up, to be up to date and then be able to, um, well, we want people to be able to raise concerns, but if it's really, really late, we process for really too late and then we'll be fixing if you are not really outstanding, but just a matter of opinion or feeling. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah go, go. Oh. no I just like I think like I was saying at the beginning I think we should probably uh, there there's probably at least a balance to find to write down a few more things from from central place to link to the various ongoing design because the full mock-up design has been done has been provided by Joe on the last meeting so you know just providing a link or something uh, some kind of a note because we already have the transcript of the meeting, so something like a summary of what I just like to do at the IRC open source meeting. Uh, there's kind of a boat to surface, you know, amongst the I don't know 900 messages that were sent, and the 10 or, or 20 things that people need to know about what what you know, was just discussed. Maybe it might be good for people like Vadek or anyone else to be able to you know, like very quickly know what was discussed if they want to chime in and dig into it. No, instead of having to watch indeed 30 minutes of video, which not everybody can afford. Yeah. And perhaps well, when, I, yep, go when I tried to review the core pull request and I asked for 
um, the design direction to understand the change in the first place because I did not explicitly did not want to provide feedback of the kind that Jeremy describes. I basically got told, uh, sign up to this Slack that nobody else is using. Maybe the messages aren't deleted yet. Yeah. And that's not a good basis for to enable people to even understand the change in the first place. And um, I want to also want to make it very clear that Wadig and I don't really care about the, I mean, design is everything. Right, I understand that, but I think um, what Jeremy described is more like, you know, which shade of blue or red or what pixel distance, and I don't think Vadik or I really care about that. Um, the feedback we've provided has been very specific and limited to a very small subset of the overall changes. Um, that specifically are about the de-emphasizing of the warnings. And we got the impression through the conversations, or at least I got the impression through the conversations we had about it, that it was, it's, it's not like, for example, on GitHub, where there's a bell with the unread marker. It's also not an email client. Um, I reviewed the admin monitors in core and like 35 of the 37 indicate that something is seriously wrong with your Jenkins instance. And um, I don't get the impression that this fact was um, uh, accounted for in the redesign. And at least for me, that was the extent of the design feedback as I understood it. Um, and now saying, well, designed by committee, <sighs> honestly, that sounds a bit like a straw man argument, uh, to be honest. Yeah, let me so say how that. can we do this more effectively then? Because I mean, I mean, obviously when we talk about shifting left, I mean, the code is too far to the right in this case. I mean, we should be doing this at an earlier phase, this feedback. There were probably design mockups or something before it was implemented. Yeah. Um, perhaps share those on, is the mailing list still active or are we entirely on Gitter? Share that in some of these channels that are accessible, but let's just say not something that people just stumble over if they are on the dev list perhaps. Um, or, and I, I, I admit in this case it would be might have been difficult to try to identify specific stakeholders for changes. Like for example, if you redesign how security warnings specifically appear in Jenkins, I would expect that you uh, contact uh, Vadek or me as stakeholders in this area. Now, obviously the notification area or the, uh, uh, the, the admin monitors are more generic than that. So perhaps that would not have worked in this case, but uh, that would be an idea in the future when it concerns something that's uh, security related, um, that you invite specific additional stakeholders uh, to provide feedback. Mm. That's not excluding people who are really interested. That's not sending an open-ended email to the entire world, but rather making sure that you get relevant feedback beforehand. That, that's a great point. Um, that, I think that's a great idea. We will definitely look, uh, look into doing that. Uh, I think you are absolutely right regarding the stakeholders. Uh, we, will, we will look into that and into pro proactively engaging the stakeholders, uh, like in this case you mentioned. And yeah, let me say that maybe my answer to you to, you can look at the documentation on the Slack and then the Slack was a bit abandoned. Yeah, maybe that was not the best answer and I, I do apologize for that. Mm. Mm. We will look into ways to better make the design references more available and to better broadcast them. We will look into what we can do. And to at least have them accessible by everybody. Yeah. I mean, 
the especially if you can provide the explanation about some of the part or things like that could be also very useful for the different feedbacks yeah yeah that would be nice i mean i think because at least i mean I, I guess what's frustrating for everybody is that you know it was you, you don't want to get the feedback by the time the pr is being merged you want to get it earlier so we can. Yeah. and of course it's not always possible to get all the feedback because uh, you know but it, you can probably get quite a lot yeah. yeah i mean we need to find a better balance i think it's just the gist of it i can't i don't really think we can really expect everybody to be able to catch every single uh backing decisions or again you know behind everything just from a 10 second glimpse you know if to be able to act on the project you have to be involved more uh, i just think indeed that we need to yeah, have a central page again just start that right away and you know, where we can you know iterate like a wiki even if we cannot don't have it anymore but you know some places where it's easy to edit afterwards and link minutes link, link some links to the design the, the food screen mockups that were you know again shared like, actually last big meeting uh but i fully understand again that not everybody could afford watching the full one to just you know track what is interesting so yeah i think we should try the next uh, immediate and easy step is that and then we can iterate on one missing on the texture uh, entry points or for for you know, outside watchers i guess we can i i think we should move on on the next discussion or subject are we going to run out of time actually no there is there, we we still have a few a few more minutes but there is no other discussion or topic so, so. oh yeah i was looking at it Rob, just one point about the PR. Uh, we said before the PR should not be there for the discussion or about the design or things like that. Uh, but just one point, uh, we have multiple PR that are just for iteration in the community and the team can uh, explain that also very well with the system read. We are on the third or fourth iteration because the initial one was just a proof of concept and then we iterate to have better quality, better quality, better integration with the rest and things like that. Also for new approach and to have just a proof of concept of the design could be also useful for the usability and not just the design. Potentially the arrow of the menu for the over effect and things like that cannot be discovered with just the slide because you don't have the feeling, the interaction with the, the components. So it could be potentially a good approach to have just a PR that is a draft that will not be merged as is, but just provide feedback and uh, iterate on the next uh, thing. Yeah, it really depends on the effort it takes, you know, because for example, for one of those things is it can be okay, but for example, for the typography, it can be a, a whole week of development effort just to have an experimental PR, you know. Um, it, it really depends on the component and how much effort it can take. But, yeah. Also, I'm, I'm sure other UI elements don't have a full seek and venues, and specific venues for discussion as we do. So, we do have this resource, so we, I think we need to use it. But yeah, I, have, I agree we can do better communicating the design decisions, especially communicating them and making them accessible. So that's something we can all agree on and that's something we can all agree we should look into. Okay, anything else? Okay, <clears throat> then if there is nothing else, uh, <laughs> Let's close this meeting. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vadek and Daniel, for raising these concerns. Uh, very valid points. Yeah, and thanks for joining. Yeah, I hope to see you again in year. And we will convene in, in, again in, in two weeks. Same, same Wednesday, same time. OK, bye, thank everybody. You thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Cheers.